My name is Matt Steinberg. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I've pretty much been a recreational player for the last 20 years or so. Okay. Tell me, uh, how did we meet? <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny story. So uh, I was on the flight uh, coming out to Vegas to be able to hang out and play poker for a few days, and uh, you were literally sitting next to me, and we just struck up a conversation and uh, led to poker. I think you probably could tell I got a little spark because uh, it's hard to talk poker with regular people that just don't play the game and aren't excited about it. And clearly you have a lot of passion for it as well. So this was definitely a solo, let's just go have fun and play poker kind of trip. Being able to chat about it, I'm sure got me a little bit pumped up uh, and in the, in the mindset of, okay, I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna do this. Got in uh, late the night before uh, woke up in the morning and just went to WSOP website to check out, you know, how to even register for the tournament and what I needed to do. And I happened to look back at the event for the 100K uh, bounty tournament and saw that there were only 15 players left. I saw all the names and I said, wow, okay, well, these are the top of the top. I probably knew 12 of the people on there. So I was uh, texting with a friend of mine and, you know, just talking to him about it and saying, you know what, I, I might do something kind of stupid today. <laughs> just had just had a feeling. I wanted the experience of going one-on-one -on -one against one of the top pros, which by the way, maybe I could luck my way into a final table because it's only 15 players. Uh, even if I was starting with a smaller chip stack having to rebuy, and it was certainly a bad equity decision to do so. But I was here and I said, you know what, this is my opportunity, I'm gonna give it a go. It was great. Uh, I sat next to Chance, uh, and you know we struck up a conversation, and he was he was nice to me. I'm sure everyone else there was just wondering who I was, but it was it wasn't that overwhelming to me. Um, I was really just focused and looking to play cards. Perfect. Tell me the first hand you got it in. <laughs> uh, so uh, I would like to say that it was a good spot for me, um, but I had 10-9 uh, uh, suited. Uh, and of course, being short stacked, I was up against uh, Dario and um, I wound up getting it all in on a queen 10 8 flop and he had king queen. I spiked a nine on the river to stay alive. So uh, this could be a totally different story because I could have busted within 30 minutes of being at the table, but I was fortunate to double up from there. Um, and I think that that kind of got me a little bit more comfortable and I was able to play more of my game after that. I certainly was texting my friends and keeping them updated. I mean, I'm texting during the $100,000 buy-in tournament and my friend's like, what are you doing? You need to be focused. I said, this is keeping me loose. This is fun. I, I you know, the camaraderie around poker is really special. I really wasn't nervous for when I sat down until I got to the bubble. And then I certainly felt that uh, when it was down to eight and they paid seven how incredible to have that experience and also win money with it because it certainly makes me more comfortable to enter into future events as well, kind of having that, that bankroll for that. I wasn't even supposed to play against Dario. There was a situation where the player I was supposed to play against was in the freeze out and doing well, so he canceled. Dario had just come off of finishing third in the uh, high roller event so he was next on the list, on the wait list. Some might say that's a bad beat, but at the same time, it's actually why I came, to be able to play uh, with someone that I knew and, and someone who's certainly the best in the world. So uh, when we sat down, it started out going great for me. Uh, I actually uh, got up to uh, about a two and a half to one, maybe even a three to one chip advantage early on. I, I was cruising, feeling pretty good, uh, although blinds were so deep, so I, I knew there was still a lot of poker left to play. And um, made a, an ill-timed bluff uh, that didn't work out so well for me and got us back to about even. Got back up to about a two to one chip advantage, and then I think uh, Dario pretty much turned it on against me uh, and um, got a little bit short stacked, got it in flopping two pair, and Dario flopped a straight, and that's just the way it happens in heads up sometimes. But we played for over three hours, and uh, we were, I think, one of, the, one of the last tables to finish. And I'm not saying that I'm positive equity to beat Dario on any given day. I, I don't believe that. But being able to play for three hours and holding my own 
made me feel accomplished in that as a recreational player for the last 20 years, um, I could sit across from him and, and play with him on a level where I didn't feel so overmatched that I wanted to run and hide away. Um, and so prior to the last couple of days, that was by far my largest entry into a tournament. Um, as a recreational player, I go to my local, you know, uh, local card room, I play 2-5, sometimes 5-10, um, and really just for fun. Uh, for me, this is all about the competition of it. I'm just a, a very competitive person, and when I sit down across from anyone, I don't care who it is, my goal is to win. And so, uh, for me, it's just a, such a fantastic experience to be able to compete at this level. Um, that's really what, what it's all about for me. While certainly it's unusual to just wake up in the morning and take a shot at a big tournament, people could do it for smaller amounts too. Uh, I mean, everything is relative, and I would just say that if uh, you're an amateur player who's ever been thinking about I would love to go out to Vegas and give it a shot. It is a fantastic experience and I would highly recommend doing it. How I got interested in poker, I would say, you know, throughout college, uh, I played, you know, and this was really before the poker boom, so right around 2000, started learning how to play poker, uh, five card stud, and then eventually when No Limit became more popular, um, just started playing home games with my friends, and I've pretty much been a recreational player for the last 20 years or so. When I registered for the tournament, my friend Sean said, listen, question for you, if you bust, if you get ace king and you bust on the first hand, are you going to be upset? And I said, honestly, as long as I feel like I play well, I'm not gonna be upset. And as soon as I mentally got over that hurdle, that's when I decided, okay, I need to do this because I'm not going to feel overwhelmed. I'm just gonna play cards and whatever happens, happens. I'd have to say the most memorable moment of the 100K event was when the bubble bursted and <laughs> I made the money. Um, I was actually in pretty decent shape uh, on the bubble, uh, I think I was fifth out of, out of eight left, and so um, I, I thought that I had a pretty good chance, um, but I don't have much experience with playing bubbles, and certainly when the smaller stacks started to double up, I got a little bit nervous, and uh, it was just really fortunate um, that there was a, a bust out because I was fairly short stacked, so I think that at that point, and knowing that there were a few big stacks left, I was just, at that point, really happy to make the money, and from that point on, I was, everything else was gravy.